Hey everyone, welcome to our essential oils class and pets. So uh, Tina and myself are going to be, mostly Tina, because <laughs> Tina is our <laughs> pet expert. Uh, we're going to be talking with you today about how you can use your essential oils on your pets. And I know that there is a little bit of fear out there, right? There's some posts out there that kind of creates a little bit of fear about using essential oils. And we just, um, Tina, you can jump in here, but you know, we're really passionate about the fact that they can work just as well with your pets as they can on yourself. And so we would hate, yeah. you know, to hear that you're not using them in, in all these different ways that you can use these essential oils. So Tina, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then I can hop into the, the focus of the presentation. Okay, um, I am uh, Tina Zarbakis, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a wellness advocate, um, passionate about doTERRA oils, but also just as passionate about animals. Um, I have two dogs, two beardies, two, uh, two geckos, um, and a myriad of foster animals. I am a wildlife foster for one of the uh, wildlife centers in Grimsby, um, and I foster bunnies and chipmunks. Uh, I have two chipmunks upstairs, actually, right now that I'm fostering will release in the spring. So I've been using the essential oils since pretty well the day I got them on my pets and trying to educate other people uh, for, for the uses for their pets as well. Um, mainly because we use so many toxic and um, chemical-laden products uh, in our household that are just as bad for our pets as they are for, for us. Um, so that's why I've taken an interest in um, learning all about oils and pets and wanted to bring it to everyone today. Great. Thanks, Tina. And uh, so I'm Linda Lukovic, uh, also an essential oils advocate. I do not have any pets, but I grew up with pets and I know a lot of people that love their pets. And so I'm um, just here joining Tina to make sure that you get all of the information that you need to be able to use your oils differently. So we are going to try make, to make this as interactive as possible. I know how hard it is when you're on a webinar to like focus on the actual content and not do a million things. So I'd love you to hang into the very end and we have some skill testing questions and some fun questions we're going to be asking you throughout the presentation. And because it's a small group, um, you guys can unmute yourself and answer that way. Or if you'd rather just chat it in, you'll be able to, if you scroll your cursor up to the very top of your screen, I think it works the same way on your phone or to the left on your phone, um, you'll be able to see a chat feature there. So when we ask questions, you can go ahead and chat it in. If you want to go ahead and chat in right now, um, how many pets you have, what kinds of pets you have, and maybe how old they are. Why don't you go ahead and do that now, um, just by using the chat feature. And um, we'll see if I can see your comments. Huh. I don't see them. <laughs> do you, Tina? No, nothing. Yeah. I don't know why I'm not able to see them. Maybe it's... Oh, from Sarah. She has a 17-year-old cat. Okay. Okay, you'll have to see it because I can't see it on my screen. Anyone okay. else have any pets? No? Oh, Suzanne. Okay. Oh, Suzanne. She's got a leopard gecko, uh, eight years old, and oh, a five-month-old puppy. Nice. How how big is your puppy? Like, how, what is it? What kind of uh, breed is it? Just that way, I know how big like it's going to be, so that I can give you an idea. Okay, uh, we'll keep watching for those comments, but let's hop into the content because we want to kind of get you through this as quickly as we can. I know you guys have exciting Fridays planned. So, uh, so this first slide, we wanted to just talk a little bit about what you're using now on your pets. So there are a lot of products out there that contain harmful ingredients that have been approved by you know, the FDA and Health Canada, and it's stuff that we use on ourselves, but also that we might be using on our pets. If you want to go ahead and type in what you're currently using, like maybe a flea treatment um, that you'd like to kind of clean up a little bit. Maybe you're using a bug spray, like a mosquito repellent in the summertime on your pets that you'd like to clean up. 
Um, maybe it's maybe you're still using bleach on your floors to clean your floors. I don't know, um, but just type it in and um, talk about what you're using, and maybe we can talk about how we can we can clean that up with some of the suggestions today. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and I'll talk about what I used to do before I had essential oils. Um, I was a, a, a great lover of uh, Swiffer Wet Jet. You know that that broom that you use and you put the the um, the liquid in. It was so easy, right? Like you just do do do. But when you actually read what is in that stuff, uh, it's it's awful. I and when I decided to get a couple of puppies, I have an Irish Wolfhound and a Golden Doodle. They're only seven weeks apart. So when I decided I was going to get uh, the puppies, I thought there's no way I'm going to use something toxic or chemical that, you know, because they, they lick their paws, right? They walk around, they lick their paws and and all that other stuff, and they'll pick up anything off the floor. They'll lick the floor. Uh, so I decided, no, I'm not doing that. And also, um, I was having my mom move in with me. And and uh, she's got emphysema and asthma. So between the three of them, I needed to make sure that um, my house was uh, chemical and toxin free. So the flea treatments, you have to be so careful. The ones that have, that are like actually a collar, uh, very, very, very bad for your animals. Um, and, oh, kellen has got two dogs. Okay, great. Um, and like all the other stuff, you're talking about the, you know, your Febreze, uh, your uh, Vim, your, the stuff you use on your counters. Uh, what the, I haven't used it for a couple of years now, so I can't even remember, like fantastic. Um, that kind of stuff. The, even the dryer balls are toxic. Uh, they go, the chemicals go in the air um, and they're toxic to, to yourself and your animals. There's a lot of things that you are using that, that you might be using in your home that are just as toxic to your animals and in fact sometimes more toxic to your animals than they are to your cells. Um, so if, if you are using those kind of things like the regular stuff that you buy off the shelf um, take a look at what's on them read read the chemicals that are in there uh, go on to the think dirty or the, uh, the the think dirty app and find out uh, what those chemicals can do to yourself and your pets um, and be very careful uh, what you use around your cats and dogs yeah now oils uh, we got that on the bottom of the screen here uh, Totally the opposite. Those are pure, doTERRA are pure certified uh, therapeutic grade oils. Um, and we'll go through here which ones to avoid um, and which ones you can use with your pets. Okay. I'm just trying to get Jennifer into the call. She's having difficulties. Uh, okay. Oh, and Carolyn's got a Yorkie poo, and it's four, and a Bichon Yorkie mix that's two. That's great. So smaller dogs. Okay, so why don't we talk about how we use the oils then first? Do you want to do the screen, uh, Tina? Yeah, so um, the first way you can use the oils is topically. So, and you, I do this to my dogs almost daily. Um, you can use a lot of the oils that doTERRA sells topically. You can either, um, as it says here, you can apply it to a localized area. Uh, and that, by that, I mean um, my golden doodle has uh, soft tissue injury on her back leg. So she limps every once in a while. So I take uh, a couple of oils and I just put um, a couple drops in my hand. I rub my hands together and I actually massage it into her leg. So that would be the, like a localized area of that, that particular area that she's having pain for them, that you're trying to, um, to, uh, to take the pain away. Or you can put it on the bottom of the, their paws. Uh, so something like um, uh, balance or um, lavender or something that you're trying to, to use to calm them down, you could actually use that for that. Okay. Now, and you can also use it aromatically, uh, the breathe it in, or use it as an, in a diffuser. Uh, it can kill the germs in the air, open up the airways, affect their, definitely affect their mood. Um, now when you're using, um, oils or you're asking your animals to, to inhale these order oils, or you're using it in a diffuser, um, take the bottle and let the, the dog, the animals self-select. So take the bottle and, and just hand it to them and see with the lid closed and see what they think. Um, my dogs love several oils. They will actually come to me with when I've got the oils. Uh, so let your dog self-select or let your animals self-select select and see if they like it. Uh, when you're using, uh, uh, when you're checking the reaction, if they run away or if they, they kind of like just turn their head, you know that that's not an oil that they like or an oil that they need at the time. 
Um, if you're putting it in your diffuser, you don't have to worry too much. Three to six drops in your diffuser for most of those oils are, are okay. Um, and the other way you can use it is internally. Uh, there are a lot of oils at doTERRA cells that you can give your dogs internally. For instance, frankincense or capiba. Um, uh, the the allergy blend, those kind of things. So uh, you can put it in a capsule and, and put it down the throat and make sure they take it that way. You can mix it with their food. Uh, of course, wet food works the best. Um, you can put at least a drop on your finger uh, and then just put it on their gums. You can also try and put it in the drinking water. I have never been successful with that. The dogs will not touch the water if I put any kind of essential oil in it. Um, or you can put it in a natural toothpaste. And we actually have a um, recipe that you can make your own toothpaste uh, for your animals. So those are the three ways that you can do that. Yeah, and so just as a reminder, the, all of the oils we're going to be speaking about are specifically doTERRA essential oils because you've heard us uh, a bunch of different times talking about how they are the best quality oils out there and we would only trust the best for our little pets. They've got small bodies and so we want to be really careful just as we are with our children to make sure that we're using the best quality oils out there. So as a reminder, there are a lot of essential oils on the market that have only been designed for use by inhaling or topically, whereas doTERRA, you can take some of those oils internally because of the 10 layers of testing. So, um, so we're talking quality here. So everything we're going to be speaking about is going to be about doTERRA, essential oils only. Correct. So we have a fun question. Um, yeah. So this is where we get some audience participation. Uh, can you guess which oils should not be used topically or internally on your dogs? And you can go ahead and chat your answer in. Okay, so Suzanne is saying On Guard. Actually, no, Suzanne, you can use On Guard for your dogs. It's a really good one. It's got cinnamon clove, um, it's a wild orange. You can use On Guard. In fact, you can diffuse it just to make sure that, you know, if they're uh, not feeling so good, it's not one you can do. Sarah is saying lemon. No, lemon you can also use for your dogs. It's part of the allergy uh, trio that we use, lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Yeah. Who else is here now? Um, oregano. Uh, oregano, you can, but that's a hot oil, Carolyn, so you have to be careful with that one. You can use it, um, but it's a hot oil. Anybody else? Oh, I can't, I can't believe there's one oil that's been talked about on the internet like crazy. Yeah. I can't believe that. I <laughs> Nobody's <answer>. getting <laughs> Okay. So these are the oils that you should not use on your dogs. Uh, Melaleuca or tea tree in Canada is one that's been, uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, conflicting views on. Uh, I can tell you a story if I can jump in, Tina. So yeah, my sister's dog had a cut and it's a, it's a lab, so a bigger dog. And um, she thought one day, oh, I, I'm gonna take tea tree and clean his paw, his cut. And so she took a cotton ball and, and put some tea tree on it and cleaned the cut and uh, kind of forgot about it. But then later on, she noticed the dog was staggering. Like they have a step in their house and it was trying to like walk up the step and it stepped up and it was like falling off to the side and then banging into things, like it was quite sad. And she's like, what is happening? And then she remembered, oh my goodness, I, I cleaned the cut with tea tree. And so she went and looked it up really quickly and found that tea tree can act like a poison in some dogs, in many dogs, I guess. And so it did enter its blood, the dog's bloodstream. Um, it's a good ending, don't worry. <laughs> the dog was totally fine <laughs> the next day. Um, but it was a good reminder that you always want to be very cautious when you're using your essential oils first, just to make sure you know your stuff. So don't use tea yeah. tree. Yeah, and, and tea tree, and as well as uh, wintergreen, develops ketones. Um, and what that does is um, they, they, they cannot absorb it so that it stays within their body longer than it would with, with us. So tea tree, wintergreen, deep blue because it has wintergreen in it, the, the deep blue oil, um, and birch as well. So those four I would stay away from. Now, uh, when you talk to Dr. Work, when she talks about uh, the, the tea tree, she does use it, but I mean, she's a vet and she, she's an expert on essential oils and vets. So um, a lot of this, the things that have been on the internet are not necessarily about doTERRA oils or it might be oils that have been bought on the internet. It could be that, you know, they've used 
a whole lot of these uh, oils. And that's why the, the consequences of that. But I would definitely stay away from those four oils, okay? Um, now, speaking of deep blue, can I just go back for a second? Speaking of deep blue, the oil you cannot use on, on animals or should not use because it has wintergreen. But the actual capsules, the soft gels for deep blue, don't have wintergreen in it. Um, in fact, deep blue um, and the deep blue lotion and the deep blue soft gels are three different, uh, uh, are three different uh, constituents in them. So the deep blue capsules, you could, you could actually open them up and depending on the size of your animal, depending on the size of your dog, um, just put a little bit of that in their food. That's something that I think I'm going to try with Ellie, but she's 50 pounds, so I could probably use the whole capsule on her. Um, safety. One of the things that you need to be careful with oils, um, and especially cats, not so much dogs, but especially cats, um, allow an exit points for your pets when diffusing. Um, that for, for cats, because they, they're very, very sensitive to any kinds of scents, even with, and I'm all, it's not just talking oils, I'm talking the chemicals and the toxins that, you're, that you might be using in your home right now. So if you're using um, Febreze and that, they're, that can be toxic to them as well. Um, if they get anything in their eye, I rinse it with milk or oil. I use oil if I ever do that, um, uh, because we do that for ourselves. If I get something, peppermint or deep blue or something in my eye, um, you know, when they have it on my hands, I use the oil for that. Be very cautious cautious when they're pregnant um, if, or if your pets are old. Um, so you've got a 17 year old cat, uh, be careful because she might be a lot more sensitive than let's say a kitten or a younger animal might be. Or if your pets are ill, if you have pets that have uh, diabetes or any kind of uh, seizures or blood uh, clots or something like that, be careful with what you're using because it might um, aggravate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here's, we've got a dilution ratio for using essential oils on dogs. And we've given here the dog weight and, uh, and, and what you could use as far as a carrier oil, like fractionated coconut oil. So if you have a small dog, like the, like the, um, like the ones that you have, Carolyn, you could do four drops uh, into four drops of carry oil, one drop of the essential oil. Um, my Irish Wolfhound is over 90 pounds, so I would use uh, four drops of oil with one drop of carry oil. So it totally depends on the size of the animal. Uh, always test for sensitivity. Watch your watch your animal. See what happens if um, if you're you're noticing that it's a little bit too much. So then just, just dilute more if necessary. And if you want to be cautious, you can always double that dilution um, for the first time. Okay, so why don't oh. we? Um go into a really popular area for a lot of people using um, oils for calming and anxiety and stress for their pets. So we'll talk about a few different ways that you can use some of those calming oils. But before we jump into it, why don't you chat in the calming oils that you know about in terms of doTERRA oils or any oils you've stumbled across in your own research um, or the ones that you've tried yourself. What are your favorite calming oils? Why don't you go ahead and chat that in right now and we'll see how many we can come up with. Anything coming up, Tina? Uh, I got nothing so far. Did we lose people? Okay, well, let's hop into it. Maybe we'll come, we'll see them trickling in a little bit. Okay. Um, well, lavender is one of the best uh, oils that you can use as a calming oil for your animals, um, especially, yeah, okay, so Carolyn, lavender, serenity, and, and cassia. Uh, cassia is a hot oil, so again, be a little bit uh, careful with that one. Um, and Susanna is saying she'll far she's only used lavender, but she's got in on today's mango. That's great. Yay. So the that's, uh, yeah, so that's great. You know, the balance is wonderful. So lavender, these are my dogs actually, uh, my uh, Irish Wolfhound and my Golden Doodle, um, and these are actual pictures of them going through their zoomies at night. And, and those of you that have dogs totally get what I'm talking about. They go crazy. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> when these two dogs go crazy, like, and you've got an Irish wolfhound, like jumping on the couch and all over the place, knocking things over, you got to do something. So, um, as much as I love to see them get happy like that, um, I, I just take, again, uh, one or two drops of lavender in my, my palm, my hand, I do that and I rub their backs with it and no word of a lie, three minutes, uh, mm. sometimes even before that, after yeah. the lavender, they're my perfect little angels. I love that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, and you know what? I'm telling you, this is exactly what happens. Everybody's amazed, they can't believe it. Like sometimes it even, like within a minute, this is what happens. Wow. Um, and it's, because my dogs, I've been using them, on, that lavender on them since they've been a puppy. Um, they, their brain already knows what they're supposed to do when they get the lavender. 
So the rain is almost asking for it. It's kind of like a, a child that is just overactive and you know they're saying, okay, they're overtired. This is kind of the same thing that's happening with your dogs. So the lavender just calms them right down. It's a really, really good thing to do. Um, now we've got here anxiety away. Uh, you can put lavender and cedar wood and use that together for them and for anxiety. Um, you can well, spray it in their bed. Um, you know, just put them, make sure that they have a nice calm environment. But I find balance blend is also a really excellent oil for, for any anxious pets. Um, my Ellie Mae, my golden doodle is a bit of a nervous Nelly and she gets really anxious when we're going out somewhere or, um, in any kind of situation, stressful situations. Um, so I just put, I do the same thing with the balance. I put it on here. I put it on their back. They actually come to me, to my hands when I have balance on my hands. They love, 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 both of them love that oil. Yeah. Um, it's a really good oil if you have dogs that um, are afraid of thunderstorms uh, lightning and all that perfect for that balance and lavender excellent serenity is another calming oil that you can use peace is another calming oil you can use um, on your animals awesome okay now this here is a, a, a wonderful pamphlet it's actually made in conjunction with dr work and you can see here in the corner it says uh, uh developed with Jan janet work uh, she's uh the essential oil vet in the u.s she is on the board of uh the veterinary uh, panel for doTERRA uh it, this is an excellent uh pamphlet that you can get uh i think we have those we got those at convention but i think they were from um my my essential oils I forget which, where we got, but you can get these. Yeah. This is great. It shows you exactly aromatically, topically, internally. It's got some tips there. It shows all the precautions, what to use, what to avoid with your dogs, what to avoid with your cats. A really, really good pamphlet that you can have there. Yeah. Okay. Let's um, talk about bugs. Bugs and fleas. Mm, and yeah. Crazy stuff. All right. So you guys can chat in if you know of any essential oils. And there's a blend, too, specifically formulated for bugs for adults. Um, see if you remember the name and go ahead and chat that in. And then Tina can start talking about. Okay, now there's a lot of, I've got, we've got some things here that you can use for bugs, the flea and tick spray. And as we were saying, if you don't get the commercialized, especially like from Walmart, the flea and tick stuff, because they're full of toxins and chemicals. So here's one you can make on your own really easily. Um, and, you know, just there's like five or six um, ingredients that you can use and just shake it well before you use it and spray it all over your pet before they go outside. Really good. Now for cats, uh, it's safe to use as prepared. So don't worry about it. You can use it for your cats as well. Now, alternatively, it's a great thing here. You, it shows that you can soak a uh, collar or banana in that mixture and use that as a flea collar uh, prior, instead of using those commercial ones. Really, really good thing here. Uh, okay, and then worried about bugs. Uh, yes, Carolyn says lemongrass. Lemongrass is a really good one for, for bugs, not just for your animals, but also for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's another one that you can put four ounce spray bottle mix, Terra Shield, peppermint, cedarwood, and lemongrass. Top it off with, off with your um, FCO. Uh, you can spray it into your hands, put it on their floor. Just be careful around any oils that you use around your animals. Just be careful that you're not, you're not putting it on your face or uh, around their face or their ears or even like their eyes. Just stay away from this general area, okay? And then you can just reapply it. Now, you can use less on your smaller dogs. So those of you who have smaller dogs, use a little bit less, okay? Right. Um, oh, doggy first aid, emergency dog care. Um, I love this topic. Uh, mm -hmm. With me, and especially with me being a, um, a wildlife rehabber, I have a lot of experience in there, a lot of instances that I've used these oils for. Um, this is a really good rejuvenating skin spray. There's just a few uh, ingredients that you can use. Mix them all together. Shake be again. Shake before you use. Always shake before you use, just to make sure you've got all the um, all the ingredients together, all the oils. Uh, you can spray the areas needed about two to three times a day. Um, and it says here, if the animals want to lick the area, um, you can put a bandage or a t-shirt on. But with these oils, you don't have to worry. That's the thing. Is you know, they it's safe to lick it. Um, but it just kind of prolongs the process. Now, as we're on safe to lick it, I know that someone had, I think it's Suzanne. Suzanne, you had a question about licking, the dog licking blue lotion, deep blue lotion off your legs. Um, I wouldn't let them do that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, my dogs like the smell of the deep blue lotion. So I would wait till maybe you go to bed and do that. Um, or, you know, make sure you put your it's pants on. It's seven o'clock. Sorry about that. And make sure you put your pants on before you do that. Because uh, it's not really that good for them. Uh, and the next thing, we, next little thing we have is essential oil tooth 
paste again look it's only like three things that you have to put in there um the essential oil for myrrh for cats and peppermint for dogs uh peppermint is not great for cats and that's why they've distinguished between the two uh just mix it together and use a dab to brush on your teeth with your your dogs or uh, cats teeth daily uh that's all natural uh allergies now allergies for your animals they can get the same kind of allergies that you get uh and for uh, for humans we are using lemon lavender and peppermint um to put on to either put in a little a capsule or uh just put it on and for for animals this is what you would do you would just do lemon lavender peppermint the same way you do for for humans um and then you can spray it up to three times on them daily uh, I, I would imagine you could also use the try ease gels depending on how big your dog is yeah. or how, yeah, because if you've got a big dog, I would imagine you could use the try ease, but I'll find that out for sure. Um, and then uh, wound magic. Uh, this is one frankincense, helichrysum, and lavender uh, with some um, aero, aloe vera juice. It's uh, just you can just put that on uh, any kind of wounds. Um, I love Correctex. It's uh, one of my favorite things to use on animals. I've used it on tiny, tiny little uh, baby bunnies. I've used it on the chipmunks. Um, I have a, a chipmunk that got caught in a uh, uh, mouse trap and broke its leg, broke its pelvis, um, and had a lot of brain damage. And when we, I put the cast on, uh, the, the paper clip that I used, it, it dug in a little bit too much and it got infected infected so i just put on the correct x and seriously within a within a day that was all um healed it's amazing so and if it's that gentle on you know a chipmunk or a bunny um can you imagine how gentle it is on your cats and your dogs it's yeah. amazing for that. and correct x um, is really reasonably priced it's it's i don't think it's much more than ten dollars twelve dollars no no, and then, you know what? It's like polysporin on on uh, steroids. That's what I always say. It's like polysporin yeah. on steroids. Yeah. I use it constantly. Yeah. Uh, use it on my dogs as well. If they get a um, um, Willow had a little cut the other day on her uh, nails, and I just put it on here, no problem. Yeah. Um, we've also got one here, the respiratory support spray. Um, if your dog is having any kind of respiratory issues, and I know there's a lot of breeds like boxers and that 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 do, and bulldogs that have respiratory issues, um, that can really help them, especially during the night when they're trying when they're not uh, breathing properly. This spray will help them. Uh, oh, and in winter, you got your paw wax. Uh, you can make that instead of buying it at the stores. You can make a, a purely natural one uh, with your essential oils. It's perfect. You just put it on the feet. Paw wax for when you go outside. Um, oh, and this one I really wanted to uh, to actually read out loud. Oils for diffusing around cats. And this is an answer straight from Dr. Janet Rourke. Um, I actually uh, subscribe, pay to her VIP page. I pay a, a monthly fee uh, because she has some amazing, amazing um, uh, uh, hints for us. So she's saying, in general, you can diffuse any oil around cats provided they are diffused in an open room only three to four drops at a time, and that the cat can leave the room if they wish. If you want to throw in some extra precautions, if you're worried about your cats being particularly sensitive, the oils I have seen some rare sensitivities to include melaleuca, which is our tea tree, birch, wintergreen, peppermint in large amounts, spearmint in large amounts, and eucalyptus in large, large amounts. So, I mean, she started, she had given that answer when there was a thing on the internet about a cat dying from this. Uh, which really, this, this, it wasn't true. It wasn't from the, the tea tree. But uh, she wanted to make sure that everybody understood that you can diffuse your oils around your cats. Uh, just, you know, just a, uh, just a few drops. Uh, for your bad breath, and I know a lot of dogs have bad breath, uh, just put in 15 drops of On Guard, five drops of Myrrh, put them in a the bottle, fill it with water, and you can spray twice daily um, inside their mouth. Okay? And somebody was saying you can, they can't use On Guard. Yeah, you can use On Guard. It's, it's good for your dogs. A little easier than brushing teeth, right? Yes, exactly. A little easier than brushing teeth. Non-dog owner. <laughs> uh, yes, and joint support. Oh, you know, this is this has got um, uh, an actual recipe for that. Uh, but all these oils are great. I use frankincense and capybara on, uh, and that's Ellie right there. She wants to go outside. Frankincense and capybara on uh, Ellie every day. Uh, or is a really good one. You can use ginger. Um, frankincense is actually really good for brain health. 
um, I used that on uh, the chipmunk that had the brain injury. Um, it was actually like twisted all itself and it couldn't use the whole left um, side. I've had bunnies that just do circles and circles uh, because there's something in the brain that just isn't, isn't right. And I just put frankincense down the back and you would believe it. They're like back to normal. Like the chipmunk I have upstairs, she's going to be released in the, in the spring. And that's just from frankincense. That's for your, the brain health. And you can use that on your dogs for sure. It's an excellent one. Uh, here's one for cleaning your, the dog's ears. Lavender basil frankincense with some uh, rubbing alcohol. And a little bit of uh, fractionated coconut oil. <clears throat> Put them in a bottle. Fill them with apple cider vinegar. Put it on a clean cloth and wipe around. Okay. Um, not never inside the ear swipe around even like when we're using basil for our own ears never inside the ears around the ear okay avoid the inside of the ears around the eyes the nose and the mouth uh, coconut oil we just wanted to put this in there to show you um, how many uses you uh, they have for coconut oil it's really good for your dogs my dogs love it I actually will put it on my hands and let them lick my hands off I'll put it on their paws as well because it's great for their paws you know how they get all dry and they'll lick it off their paws um, if I try to put anything on the bottom of my feet at night with coconut oil, they try like crazy to lick it off. They love, love, love the taste of it. So there's all kinds of stuff here that you can use it with. And that's why we wanted to put this slide in here for you. Um, okay. And now, does anybody know which animals that you cannot use a diffuser around? Anybody, anyone want to guess? Gerbo. <laughs> Actually, no, that was a trick question. You can use, you can diffuse around all these animals. Mm -hmm. I have uh, my, my bearded dragons in both my living room and my kitchen. Uh, I diffuse every single day with them. Um, same with the chipmunks, the dogs. Uh, I would not hesitate to diffuse around any of the my animals any of my pets yeah okay so that was a trick question <laughs> so as you can see the essential oils are very safe for pets few things you need to know but other than that um there are some amazing resources out there first of all tina and our team she's an amazing resource if you ever have any questions you can always reach out to her she's fantastic um, or you can take a look at janet rourke's website you can follow her stuff you can even order like pamphlets and um even labels for your bottles and things. And, um, and then we have our amazing resources here, the Essential Life Book. There's a pet section in there and it's fantastic. It will give you some great DIYs and you know, the ways you can use your oils. Um, there's also a great website called the Aromatic Plant Research Center. They do all their testing of doTERRA's essential oils, oils. Now, they're not testing them on pets quite yet, but they are absolutely testing them. And so it's always great to see the research coming out of that center. And of course, we have our uh, Facebook group, Learning One Drop at a Time, where we add all of our customers into that and post on a regular basis about how to use your oils, because we want you to be using your oils in all sorts of different ways. So if you are not a customer, I think you guys are all customers, so I'm not going to go into a lot of details here. But um, if you are not on the loyalty reward program right now, we have a special promo that we're going to be offering you. And I'm going to send that after the fact if you're not on it. And um, for those of you who are new to essential oils, I also have something that I will send you after the fact as well. So we are going to do just a quick giveaway just because you made the effort to be on this call live. So we have a beautiful lavender touch that we're going to be giving away. And Tina, how do you want to do it? Do you want to say, do you have a skill testing question you can ask to see if anyone was listening? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let me think. What, uh, hmm. if they're all doTERRA customers, uh, perhaps what blend would be a really good one to use uh, for joint pain and it would be great for older dogs. Mm. Does anybody have any idea? Like a, a doTERRA proprietary blend or their yeah. own? A doTERRA proprietary blend, since you were saying they're all customers on here. Yeah. Anybody have any guesses? You can unmute. Free lavender touch, <laughs> up for grabs. 
Carolyn says lavender. No, it's a blend. It's a really good blend that you can use. Or now the question, what blend would you use um, in a kitty litter to, to help with the smells? Mm. Purify? Purify, you're right. Awesome. Exactly. That would be your number one blend to use in the kitty litter. And no different than for us, right? If we got some smells that we need to get rid of, Purify yeah. would do it for us. Yeah. Uh, and the kitty litter, it is fantastic. And I'm hoping to get a cat kitten in the summer, so I'll be using that for sure. Cool. Okay, so you get the prize. Was that Carolyn? No. That was Terry, actually. Terry. Okay, I'll make sure you get the prize. And um, what was, do you want to answer your first question, Tina, just for everyone's information? Uh, the answer to your first question would be your aroma touch. Aroma so touch. just like with, yeah, just like with us, you know, when you're using the aroma touch to massage the aches and pains away, you can use that with your animals as well. That is such a great blend, and I often forget about that one myself. But just I know you too. Yeah, me fantastic. Too. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, if you have any questions, guys, you have a minute now to ask your questions. I'm going to stop the recording and um, so that we can share this later. But we can all stay on.